Claudia is in London meeting with mining officials and the British government after a turbulent year for the industry in South Africa. After a year which saw strikes in the country, there are concerns that wage negotiations in the gold and coal mining sectors could lead to further instability this year. Our UK correspondent Dan Whitehead spoke to the minister. He started by asking him what his hopes are for 2015. We are obliged to stabilize the industry, make sure that the peace that we have attained uh, in the middle of last year is further sustained. And um, we are doing this through a range of initiatives under the special presidential projects to stabilize the mining uh, communities. Uh, this would include the provision of housing in collaboration with industry, um, but also going beyond housing, uh, establishing new communities, particularly for those who are coming from outside uh, the resident places of the mines. Tell me about where you think uh, the main business will be done for South Africa in the mining industry. We are uh, seeing a potential slowdown in China and economic growth in the US. Uh, what about the UK and Europe as well? Just tell us where the focus is for the industry uh, in terms of business in other countries. As matters stand, the UK remains our biggest uh, market. Uh, there have been very little debt on it for historical reasons. Um, and we welcome new players in our sphere, uh, America and China, um, and those economies feed off each other, by the way. What is the government doing to, to tackle the issue of tax havens, which is potentially seeing millions of rand being taken out of South Africa? Um, when people come in there to invest first time, we give them incentives in terms of tax rebates and so on, and we expect them at the end of uh, the day as they begin to make profit to remember that uh, they are uh, harvesting our own crop as an industry, as investors, and that uh, we have been very nice to them and kind and given them uh, a chance to succeed, and therefore they must give us a chance to succeed because we have a responsibility towards our people. So in other words, we discourage uh, indirect disinvestment or tax avoidance by anyone who's operating in our country. Uh, uh, and what policies will that include then to ensure that that is avoided? Policies are there in place. I mean, you have had a situation where our SAS, South African Revenue Services, have collected money from mines who are using what is called the, uh, the schemes that you are referring to, and they have paid some billions back uh, in the past, so we'll continue to do it. Meanwhile, a wildcat strike will continue at North and Platinum in Limpopo. That was decided at a meeting between the National Union of Mine Workers and Workers. Now, the union received a court order yesterday from the company saying that it should stop the strike. It's defying that. Northam itself said 40% of the workforce showed up for today's morning shift and it gave the remaining strikers until tomorrow to return or face possible dismissal. The strike began on Tuesday night when more than 5,000 workers downed tools at the Zonder Ender mine. They are demanding the removal of Chief Executive Paul Dunn for alleged unfair hiring and firing practices. The wider platform industry is still recovering from a strike last year by NUM's arch rival AMCU, which hit the world's top producers. Northam itself has had its share of labour woes. 7,000 NUM members went on an 11-week wage strike at the same mine, Zonder Ender, and that ended in January last year. The operation produces about 65% of Northam's total output. Time for the markets now and the JSE bounced back today. It's been up and down this January. It gained more than 1% with investors trading cautiously though in what has been a very volatile market. Let's take a look at your numbers. Great to have you with us on Business Review after the